Apple Macs are undeniably very appealing for the way they look. In this video I'm going to show you the top 10 designs I think Apple have ever come up with for a Mac of theirs. It's given that everyone has a different taste for product design, but here's my list, saving the best until last. Number 10, the MacBook Air 2022 Midnight. This is a very new Mac design, its colour is truly unique and what makes it look so great I think. I love darker colours on matte textures and this almost matte black shade has not disappointed. Bear in mind, the M2 chip is what's inside these, and is very capable. Buy one today, and you can still expect at least half a decade of solid use out of it, I'm sure. Ten years isn't out of the question, by the way. Between 2008 and 2017, Apple used the same design on their MacBook Airs, with the sloped silver design sporting hefty bezels. It's mad to think they sold a product that changed so little for the best part of a decade. For the next couple of years, they pretty much mimicked the MacBook Pro design, so it's nice now to see the airline get such a unique look. Number 9, the iMac Pro 2017. I'm a fan of the last generation's silver iMac design. I think the screens are absolutely brilliant, and the way their bodies taper to such thin edges on all sides is great. Silver is just a bit 2010, for Macs that is. The iMac Pro looks sleek and almost space age in comparison. This thing is actually relatively unknown as far as Macs go. It's essentially an iMac marketed at creative industry professionals. These things carried Intel Xeon processors with up to 18 cores for really CPU stressy tasks, and had a maximum of 256GB of DDR4 memory. They also had some impressive graphics cards at the time, with the top spec option being a Vega 64X. Those specs are still absolutely competitive with today's tasks, six years later. The space grey design on the iMac Pro matches MacBook Pros of the era, by the way, which I think went down well too. The computer started at 5000 bucks though, and with little room for upgrading these parts further down the line, it's no wonder these were not a storming success, even among professionals. Number 8, the trash can or cylindrical Mac Pro 2013. This is one of the more unique creations on this list. The idea of having a top-of-the-range professional computer in such a small and unusual looking case was cool, and I'm glad they did bring it into fruition. I think the Mac Pro was ahead of its time in all the wrong ways, though. The small size of this machine ended up being its Achilles heel, with the graphics cards often dying from long-term exposure to a pretty hot and cramped environment. Speaking of graphics, this machine had proprietary AMD cards of the D series, which were and still are very expensive to buy for repairs or upgrading. Back to the design though, the glossy black aluminium tube that was the 2013 Mac Pro was like very little Apple had made before. The ports were all on one side, leaving the rest of it looking undeniably like a rubbish bin. I can't help but think if it were created alongside the M1 chips these days, Apple Silicon would fare much better than the Intel and AMD parts Apple paired it with initially. Maybe we'll see something shaped like this again someday. Number 7, MacBook Pro 17 inch unibody, 2008 to 2011. 17 inches was the biggest laptop screen on any Apple laptop ever. Despite it being gone for nearly 12 years now, these things could pass for being only a few years old. The beautiful screens on the 17 inches had remarkably small bezels, which only further showcased how great the displays were. Carrying this laptop almost felt like taking a small desktop with you, and when you opened it, it wasn't far off the size of one either. These laptops were infamously plagued with graphics card problems between 2010 to 11, meaning most of the powerful models from these years either have dead GPUs currently, and are no longer usable, or will do in the near future. 2009 models are a safer bet, and I'm trying to get my hands on one for a video in the next couple of weeks. It's possible to patch newer operating systems like Big Sur on these things, if a little foolish given their age. The 17-inch MacBook Pros epitomise the unibody era of MacBook design, which was introduced in 2008 and ran all the way through to 2012. Do you think we'll ever see a 17-inch laptop from Apple again? Number 6, the iMac G4. This is oddly another computer with a 17-inch display option. The iMac G4 was something unlike any computers you see today. The bulk of the parts are based inside the hefty looking stand, while the screen appears to pop out of it on a stick. I reckon when 2001 A Space Odyssey was being written, Kubrick and Clark had computers like this in their minds as the future. The iMac G4 released with a 1GHz PowerPC processor and up to 1GB of DDR memory. 
It came during a time when computers were moving on at light speed though, and despite looking sublime, it wasn't able to be a mainstream computer for too many years. It's hard not to love the shiny white and silver design present across the whole thing's body, and the same design language was seen on the speakers, keyboard and mouse that could be paired with it. Like most Macs, there's a dedicated community of fans of the iMac G4, some of whom loved the design so much they managed to put newer components inside and run it as a completely different, modern machine. Number 5, the Power Mac G4 Cube. Man, I'm regretting putting this so far down the list. This thing looks like an early 2000s interpretation of the Mac Studio released a couple of years ago. Most people either love or hate the G4 Cube with its opaque plastic covered core. I personally love the handle mechanism used to slide out the internals of the machine. The way fan grills and the optical drive bay are so slickly buried on one side of the cube's body makes it look like something out of Star Wars. It's far from usable for modern tasks, unfortunately, with a 450MHz power PC processor. In fact, the entire machine was a bit underpowered for its asking price at the time, rendering it a relative financial failure for Apple. Number 4. The MacBook 12-inch Retina from 2015 to 17. If the 12-inch MacBook was anything, it was a super pretty laptop. But yeah, that's about all it was. Performance on these was nothing to write home about, since they were so small they needed low-power Intel M-series chips to run effectively. The look, though. Now that was something unique. Apple hasn't released a computer that thin since. The 12-inch was the very first of the Thunderbolt-era Macs, meaning it had no glowing Apple logo and had just USB-C for connecting devices. Moreover, it only had two ports, one USB and one audio jack. These were bold moves, but it's safe to say they didn't entirely pay off. Apple had to employ a replacement program on the keyboards on these MacBooks because of how bad they were thanks to the ultra-thin design. Number 3, another 12-inch laptop, the PowerBook G4 12 2003. I think this is the nicest looking Apple laptop of all time. Of course it's a silver aluminium design. This one had a glowing logo on the back and matching silver keys, placing it firmly in the early 2000s visibly. Speaking of the keyboard, I strongly believe this keyboard was the best Apple came out with. The keys all joined together with ridged edges for accurate typing. The 12-inch PowerBook came with several iterations of a PowerPC processor. Interestingly, all PowerPC processors were single-core, so haven't exactly aged like fine wine. The 12-inches could be equipped with up to 1.25 gigabytes of RAM, with a dedicated compartment for replacing the memory modules. Batteries could be replaced super easily, and came out with a twist of this piece on the back. The ports on the sides of this laptop look great, and give another level of functionality to it. This thing looks pretty cool now, albeit a bit dated, but imagine pulling one of these out in 2003 next to some guy with a slab of plastic laptop from the same year. I recently picked up one of these, and I'm going to have to be upgrading it to flash storage and new battery and maximum RAM in a video coming soon. Number 2 the original iMac, known now as the G3. There are so many reasons why this must rank highly on every list like this. Firstly, the bright colours on this design were super bold at a time when most computers were black, white, or one of several shades of grey. The G3 pulled the colours off really well though. The original Bondi blue colour is widely regarded as the best of all time, but there are a dozen colour options over the years. Like many on this list, Johnny Ive was lead designer at Apple when they came out with this thing, and his eye for thinking different gave this computer the edge over all other 90s devices, visually speaking. Apple accredited with marketing the desktop computer strongly at home users earlier than most, making the internals easy to see through the clear plastic case on the G3. It was said that seeing what went on inside the computer made it less mysterious and daunting to the average Joe, leading to more sales in the long run. The iMac G3 has a real personality about it, I think. The optical drive looks like a mouth on the face of this thing, and whatever bright colour you see on it gives it a mood of sorts. Number 1. The Mac Pro 2019 Forget how influential some of these Macs were. After all, this is a list judged on design only. The 2019 Mac Pro weighed over 18 kilos, as the vast majority of the parts and frame were metal. Most of the case's surface is covered in airflow-aiding vents or holes, the three fans on the inside front helped push air through the machine, which was heralded at the time for its thermal performance. This was the most powerful Intel Mac Apple ever made. The Mac's configuration was a 28-core Xeon CPU, up to 1.5 terabytes of DDR4, 
two AMD W6800s and virtually any amount of solid state storage. It came with a 1400 watt power supply. It's not just the way that it looks that made the design of this thing so good. It was perhaps the last Mac that was truly upgradable, and that means a hell of a lot to a lot of people. With this being one of the last machines Apple gave an Intel processor to, only time will tell how long Mac OS will be supported on it for. In a couple of years time, it'll likely be rendered obsolete by a lack of OS updates. So it's nice to see this as the computer Apple created to bid farewell to x86 architecture. I'm quite interested to see what you think's the best Mac design of all time, so leave a comment if you have one in mind. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe for more. I guess you could even leave a super thanks if you loved it.